on today's Church TechCast Q&A show, 1080p recording, Pope Francis, and SMS short codes. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of the Church TechCast Q&A Show. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I would love for you to uh, engage with me, ask me questions like those of uh, you who have asked the questions that I'm answering today. I've got a uh, good little number of questions, most of which came from Twitter, which, of course, my Twitter name is Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F, and if you are on Twitter and you like to interact that way, feel free, go right ahead. Or if you would prefer to email, it's paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com or call 1 763 3246. That's 1 pod echo to echo back to this podcast. So, by the way, if you forget any of that, just head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. And there you can leave your questions, comments, snide remarks, what have you. Or right below the video, there's a comment box. Just write it in there. That works too. This show and all the churchtechcast.com shows are generously provided for by viewers like you. Thank you. Head on over to patreon.com slash paulallencliff. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Paul Allen Cliff, and you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. Every little bit helps, and there are some nifty prizes above the uh, introductory level, so take a look at those. I think you'll be quite pleased with what you can get. So, I've got a group of questions here, and I thought that uh, we'd just go through them one at a time and answer them, as I do every Friday at uh, this show is recorded live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, so you can always ask them in the chat room, which I have up and over on my primary monitor, um, or you can uh, send them to me th those other ways. Dave Shrine asked me, Hey Paul, any thoughts on getting a quality 1080p recording with my Logitech C930E on my Mac? It's super choppy in QuickTime. Um, so Dave, there's a few things you can do. You can try QuickTime 7. You can try the utility that came with the Logitech webcam. I've had uh, the most luck with that. But I find that 1080p video isn't always necessary. What I'm sending this out at is 640 by 360, which is actually less than standard def. It's a widescreen version of standard def, but on the internet, a lot of times that video is embedded within a window, so people don't go to the trouble of making it full screen. So it might be that you don't need 1080p. If you do, and it's not a live thing, what I do most of the time is I just use my DSLR. This is my Canon T3i, which takes beautiful 1080p video, and uh, that gets me a better result than using my web camera. So, just some ideas. You might also look for, uh, see if there are any recording utilities, that that's basically all they do, and you might get some good luck there. I'm the drivers don't seem to like Wirecast, so that's another reason why I'm hanging tough right at uh, 640 by 360 as well. Uh, Casey Jerombeck, Casey, I really hope I'm not messing up your name. Uh, he just wanted to say, in fact, that's how he started, just wanted to say that I watched your show yesterday about shooting into glass was very good. I learned something. And uh, Casey is part of a media company. I think it's his media company. So I take that as a supreme compliment. We've 
discuss some other stuff before, and I'm glad that I was able to help him on that. Patty uh, Kogatek um, asked, now this is a deep one, what is the most important step that Pope Francis could take to make the church more meaningful to recovering Catholics? I told you it was deep. Not exactly tech, but I'll go ahead and tackle it since I do have an MDiv. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a priest. I'm not in the clergy whatsoever. But I have uh, really felt called on my life to spend all the all the time and my energy that I can in helping get out Jesus' message of love and hope. So, with that said, I think Pope Francis is doing some really good stuff. I think that he is showing humility in a way that at least none of the popes in my lifetime have. I think that he is doing his best to start with understanding and start with common dialogue and not start with condemnation and rules. So I think that that's good. I think that he seems to be willing to engage with people and that's all good. I think that one thing I'm seeing in him too is sometimes it's easy to jump to defense instead of jumping to understanding. So when someone says something like, well, priests weren't required to be celibate until the 10th century or something like that. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying if you hear that, uh, it might be true. I just haven't done any research. So if you hear that and that's not what you believe, you can jump into defensive mode where you just go after the person that said that. And it seems as though that Pope Francis isn't in defensive mode. He's in understanding mode, which I think is helpful. I think there are some very big issues in the church, some areas where church tradition has become so important to the Roman Catholic Church that it's gotten in the way of their core message. And the question is, should all should some of the tradition be re-examined? I think that's a good thing, and I think Pope Francis is a pope to do it. So we'll see uh, if that's in, in fact what he does. Uh, in general, I'm a fan of him and uh, the stuff that he's doing, but I'm not Catholic. I'm Protestant. been Protestant my whole life, although I just love, I love the church in general, and when I say the church, I mean that in the lowercase c uh, Catholic sort of way, or the universal church. I love all the churches that claim the name of Jesus Christ, and some are a little freaky, and I'm not pointing out anyone in that. And some are very traditional and proscripted, and I'm not po uh, pointing out anyone on that. But I think that there's fun in the great variety, and I think that it's part of God's nature that he really enjoys creativity. So I think that there's a bit of it that he likes. Now the divisions, the arguing, I think it's a little bit to God's heart like when your children argue with each other. It just gets on your nerves a little bit that these kids who love each other are arguing about silly things. And I think that a lot of the church is all about arguing about silly things, and I really wish that we'd stop that. Wish we'd grow up a bit and let traditional people be traditional, let um, cutting edge people be cutting edge, and support each other in our joint mi mission of changing lives and eternities. Okay, uh, Barbara Brutt 
or Brute, I don't know how it's pronounced, uh, says, what's one thing about the church you wished people knew? This, again, was a Twitter uh, message, and I answered this. I believe this is exactly 140 characters. The message is good news about getting a do-over for all your regrets from a creator who loves you a lot, not obeying rules. I think that that's absolutely the heart of the gospel. In fact, in any time that you hear someone say the word gospel and then what they tell you is not good news, that's not the gospel. Because by definition, the gospel is good news. Gospel is just a uh, transliterated word for good news. So, um, maybe not transliterated, but still, it, it just means good news. So, if what you hear is not good news, that's not the gospel. Um, there's a certain group that goes around telling people that God hates them. Not good news. Actually, stuff that people believe already. So, not really good news. We hope that God won't hold it against us, but most people think that God's mad at them, or at least frustrated with them, or at least unhappy. So that's not good news. The good news of Jesus is that he came to take the penalty so that God would willingly forgive and offer us recon reconciliation. Even though we turn our backs on him, he still wants to be in relationship with us. And if we're willing, if we're willing to say, yeah, I screwed up and I need you, he's willing to take us back. So I think that that's really worth highlighting. I really wish that everyone knew that. So final question and this is much more technical in nature uh, than the last two were. Uh, this comes from the Church Media Tech Group, and I engaged with this, although it wasn't directly to me, and I, I thought there's a little piece that I didn't know earlier that I'd love to share with you in case that you're doing this. Okay, here's the media technology question. This comes from Ben Baker on that group. I'm looking for an SMS system to get prayer requests from my youth group. I'm thinking along the lines of the number that they could text, not a phone number, but one of those 067584 type things, and the prayer request would come up somewhere that could be accessed via computer. A volunteer could then copy those into a slide to put up on the screen at a later point in the service. Anyone know of anything like this or actually use a service like this? So if they're on Twitter you can do 40404 is the short code and you can text directly to Twitter and that would do it. And he's using ProPresenter, there's a Twitter module, that would also make it nice and simple. But he doesn't necessarily want to use Twitter. so. Someone suggested Google Voice. Well, Google Voice is fine. They don't have any local numbers in his area. But he could certainly go to um, get a Google Voice number and then go to Twilio, T-W-I-L-I-O dot com, and get an SMS short code. Those are a dollar a month and then point zero or it's 0075 cents a minute. So three quarters of a, not a minute, a message. Three quarters of a penny per message. So, you know, you could get a hundred of those bad boys and only be writing at 75 cents a month. So $2, $5, $10 even a month would get you a mess of messages 
coming in. And I think that that would be a great way to do that. You could have the Google Voice stuff go to an email account, and that could be then shared to people that uh, could be set up to pray for that. And you can copy and paste it into ProPresenter and put it up on the screen for prayer requests. So, uh, and it might actually work a little bit better because you would have, well, I guess in the Twitter module in ProPresenter, you have the ability to filter through those. But if someone, if a girl says, hey, I'm pregnant and I need prayer, and she's a student, you might not necessarily want to put that up on screen because the kids might try and figure out who it is, even if you left it anonymous. So it could be the case that um, you'll just work on it in that way, that uh, you would get the prayer requests and filter out the sensitive ones and go from there. So how about you? Do you have any questions, comments, or anything that you'd love for me to discuss? Don't forget to head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. This show is recorded live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 1500 UTC on churchtechcast.com. I say every Friday, the vast majority of them. I try not to miss one, but occasionally there's something that makes it difficult. And when the time changes in the U.S., that time changes from 1500 to 1400 UTC, just as an aside. So if it, you're watching this in the winter, keep that in mind. If you would like to subscribe to this show via podcast, go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a subscribe button there. Go ahead and subscribe to it. Please share this show with all your friends and uh, loved ones, etc., uh, especially people that would be interested. And until next time, I hope that my answers have helped you go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.